peace is peace. It's not deception. It's not invasion. It's not lies. Our next speaker is our beloved Tom. And Tom is from the We Hold These Truth. He's been here many times and we've been in many activities together. I am honored to present for you Brother Tom. Give him a lot of salam ala Muhammad. Thank you. My name is Tom Compton and I'm, I'm really honored to be here and I want to thank Lena and the Students for Justice in Palestine. I've been following them very closely, been to a number of their events including the silent protest and what they're doing in the campuses today is just amazing. It really is changing the tenor, if you will, in the campuses away from Zionism. In fact, the Zionists are very concerned. Chuck and I went to Washington, D.C. in March to participate in the Occupy APAC, which is a new movement. There's movements springing up all over, both Christians, Jewish, Muslims that are working against the occupation of Palestine. At We Hold These Truths, our focus is on Christian Zionism. Here's Brother Hanny at one of our events right here in Tempe. We Hold These Truths is kind of a mixed bag as far as what do we do, and I'll try to show this. We are an information agency. We're an action agency. We are Christians. I'm a follower of Christ. And we believe that we need to stand up for the rights of all. And so that's what I see. I was so glad to see groups like Students for Justice in Palestine. APAC had 13,000 people at their conference in Washington, D.C. Our president was there. They had 1,000 students. And the Zionists realize that they are losing the college campuses to ideas about justice. And we think of you know, the issue of Palestine is wrapped around this concept of Zionism, the control here in the United States on our Congress by groups like APAC, ADL, Anti-Defamation League, the B'nai B'rith, JDL, Jewish Defense League. But there's a missing link there that they don't show on this that is our specialty Christian Zionism, and I'm using this little, what I call a metaphor, it's a mayhem metaphor is my term for it, but Christian Zionism is kind of like a bus, and we in Christianity don't all embrace those people that are in the bus. So, for example, tours are very popular of the Holy Land. Millions of, of American Christians go to the Holy Land to visit the place where Jesus walked. So it's, as Brother Hanny said, it's a very holy place. And in this bus, and you won't recognize all the people, and I'm not going to talk about all the people, but you've got people like Pat Robertson, Rod Parsley, John Hagee, and so forth and so on there that promote the idea of Christian Zionism. And we're not really going to talk about so much what it is We'll give you a little idea on how to identify a Christian Zionists. It's fairly simple to do, and they don't even mind you asking them. The question is, do you believe that the modern state of Israel is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy? And if they say right away, yes, I agree, then it's a pretty good idea that they're, they're Christian Zionists. If they hesitate at all, then they may have not made their mind up. So that's who we're trying to appeal to those people that have not made their mind or closed their mind to the issue. Because as we all know, the issue of Palestine is not well covered by our media. There's a decided bias to this. And so what happens when people go to the Holy Land? They do go into Bethlehem. They take a bus to the border. They get on a bus. There's an Arab driver that drives them in. Palestine. They're there for maybe a few hours. And of course, the driver can't really say anything to him because he'll lose his job. And so they don't really interact with anybody while they're there. Not even 
their fellow Christians unless they go to a, a holy site, a church, this type of thing. So there's, there's a powerful influence on our government. There are over 40 to 70 million evangelical Christians that are influenced by Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism is the only religion that has war as one of its principles, where the people who follow it actually are expected to accept war, where they feel that war is necessary to the carrying out of their religious end, where their view of paradise, where their view of heaven is actually involved in war. No other religion that I know of is anything like that. And, and Christianity itself, based on fundamental Christianity, 2,000 years old, has nothing to do with Christian Zionism 100 or 150 years old. At the apex of the Christian Zionist sect, which is only a little over 100 years old, are media personalities such as John Hagee, Ron Parsley, Pat Robertson, the late Jerry Falwell, and many others. Each has openly expressed the view that war upon Islamic states is necessary including war against Iran. It is time for America to consider a military preemptive strike against Iran to prevent a nuclear holocaust in Israel. Now John Hagee purports to be a Christian. And so Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Now this is actually taken from our holy book, the Bible in the New Testament. In Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, in Matthew 5, it's called the Beatitudes. And, and the rest of that verse is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So my question is, how could that man be called a son of God while making a statement that is not representative of who a peacemaker is who our Savior guided to us to say. A couple verses later, talking to Christians, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. My question is, how can somebody that's calling for a war against another population be shining a light? Unfortunately, millions of Christians have been beguiled by this type of thinking and literally turn their backs on what our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us to do and to demonstrate to others. The question, of course, is who would Jesus bomb? And this is a picture of Chuck Carlson, who you just heard a little bit earlier. This was at the Occupy APAC. This lady right here, this young lady, her name was Miriam. She's a Palestinian. We've been doing vigils. We've been challenging churches since 2002, before the war in Iraq started, the Gulf War in 2003. This was one of the first churches, Calvary Community Church, right here on the west side of Phoenix, that we had a vigil at. They were so incensed that they went in and raised up their national flag. As you'll recognize the, the Israeli flag there. Hi, Tom here. We're at Calvary Community Church in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm with We Hold These Truths, and We Hold These Truths has conducted over 200 vigils at Christian Zionist churches, and this definitely would qualify as a Christian Zionist church. Uh, we've even talked to the pastor here, and he's answered our question. Do you believe that the modern state of Israel is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy? Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt at all. If Israel is the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, which it is not, then where does Jesus fit in? Jesus or Israel? One of the other is the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Old Testament. There is no room for both. Unfortunately, we see that millions of Christians are enablers of the state of Israel. No matter what Israel does, 40 to 70 million American Christians are influenced by the notion of Christian Zionism. So we have the United States of America, the government, uh, being enablers of Israel to the tune of almost $4 billion a year. Hi. And so we're asking people, 
what did Jesus teach? Love your neighbor as yourself, love even your enemies, and blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And what we see with Christians today, uh, many evangelicals, they say they're for life, they're pro-life, but they have no problem supporting these wars that are killing innocent pe people in places like Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, and the list goes on. So we're here to uh, at least let people know that there is another side of Jesus. Blessed are the peacemakers. Pastor, Coming please church. pray. Let's pray right now. Come on, saints. Let's all pray. You and your homes. Father, yes, in Lord. the name of the Lord Jesus, yes, I pray for our president tonight. I pray that you would give him the wisdom of Solomon to lead this nation into war against the enemies of righteousness. I pray for the good men and women in Washington, D.C., that they will stand in righteous boldness for this righteous cause. I pray in the name of Jesus that every power and principality of darkness will be brought to confusion yes. when this war begins. Yes. I pray, God, that the enemy shall be destroyed and that the angels of heaven shall go before the U.S. and British forces, bringing deliverance to that part of the world and most assuredly deliverance to Israel. Yes. Now, this prayer was made in 2003 before the Gulf War. One of the leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention, which represents 16 million Baptists, wrote a letter to the president saying that a war against Saddam Hussein would be a justifiable war, according to his reading of the Bible. This was the letter right here, Richard Land, that wrote to the president before the war. We've challenged the Southern Baptists, and this is Onita Carlson, Chuck Carlson's wife. And this was actually here in Phoenix a few years ago, and this is the kind of thing we do. Rod Parsley was the man that was endorsing Senator McCain when he was running four years ago for president. Well, he's so radical that even McCain withdrew that endorsement. Islam is an anti-Christ religion that intends through violence to conquer the world. And I'm very honored today to have one of the truly great leaders in America, a moral compass, a spiritual guide, Pastor Ralph Parsley, who is here. The fact is that America was founded, I'm going to stagger you right now, America was founded in part with the intention of seeing this false religion destroyed. This is Chuck Carlson in front of his church, World Harvest Church in Columbus, Ohio. So we have confronted a number of these Christian Zionists on their own turf, including John Hagee's church in San Antonio. More recently, while we were at Occupy APAC, we also did a vigil in Washington, D.C. area, and some of our Muslim friends joined us there. Mitt Romney's trip to Israel this weekend is unmistakably aimed at a traditional democratic voting bloc. As a group, Jewish Americans are very politically active in fundraising, campaigning, and voting. I think Mitt Romney is going to Israel certainly to court uh, the Jewish vote. However, Randall Balmer, a professor at Dartmouth and author of God in the White House, says Romney may have an even bigger prize in mind. I think more important, the constituency he wants to impress is uh, the evangelicals, people who have an unequivocal support for Israel. And this is the constituency that uh, was quite suspicious of him in the course of, of the primaries. And in many ways, he hasn't fully won them over. 
Countless Christian evangelicals are indeed staunch supporters of Israel, citing a biblical kinship with the Jewish nation. Their interest in the well-being of Israel has been a motivating force in recent years for many Republican contenders to visit the Holy Land and speak out for Israeli rights. Israel is our friend. The American and Israeli link connection will grow and strengthen. What's more, the group Christians United for Israel, with more than a million members, whose leadership is politically conservative, says President Obama has further strained America's sometimes tense relationship with Israel. Did you recognize any of the people in that uh, last clip there? Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of uh, Israel, shaking hands with John Hagee. What I want to show here actually is we only have a one-party system here in the United States. It has two sides. It has a Republican side and a Democrat side. We get wars with Republicans. We get wars with Democrats. We get the same thing. And so not to pick on the Republicans, we're going to give the Democrats equal opportunity here. I visited with families who've known the terror of rocket fire and stroke. And that's why, as president, I have provided critical funding to deploy the Iron Dome system that has intercepted rockets that might have hit homes and hospitals and schools in that town and in others. Now our assistance is expanding Israel's defensive capabilities so that more Israelis can live free from the fear of rockets and ballistic missiles. Because no family, no citizen, should live in fear. And just as we've been there with our security assistance, we've been there through our diplomacy. When the Goldstone Report unfairly singled out Israel for criticism, we challenged it. When Israel was isolated in the aftermath of the flotilla incident, we supported them. When the Durban conference was commemorated, we boycotted it, and we will always reject the notion that Zionism is racism. You will keep the U.S.-Israel relationship going strong. You know, as a senator from New York and Secretary of State, I've had the privilege of working closely with APAC members to strengthen and deepen America's ties with Israel. Now, we may not have always agreed on every detail, but we've always shared an unwavering, unshakable commitment to our alliance and to Israel's future as a secure and democratic homeland for the Jewish people. I speak to you today as a lifelong supporter and true friend of Israel. I'm a newcomer to politics, but not to backing the Jewish state. In 2001, weeks after the attacks on New York City and on Washington, and frankly, the attacks on all of us, attacks that perpetrated, and they were perpetrated, by the Islamic fundamentalists. Mayor Rudy Giuliani visited Israel to show solidarity with terror victims. I sent my plane because I backed the mission for Israel 100 percent. In spring of 2004, at the height of the violence in the Gaza Strip, I was the Grand Marshal of the 40th Salute to Israel Parade, the largest single gathering in support of the Jewish state. Can anybody explain the difference between the Republicans and Democrats there? I don't think you'll see a smidgen there, actually. So there's not much difference between Republicans and Democrats when it comes to very important, life-threatening types of things, like war, for example, and the treatment of Palestinians. Our purpose, of course, is to inform people like yourselves that are sympathetic to the issue, and then to challenge other Christians. 
we're seeing a turning away. People are rejecting the likes of a John Hagee because he is so offensive. I mean, he's a genuine, hateful, bigoted racist is the only way I can describe the man. Conflicting views over the state of Israel brought protesters to Cornerstone Church in downtown Fresno today. A small group of protesters brought out large signs and lined up across the street from the church. The group is associated with the organization, We Hold These Truths. They say not all Christians believe the present state of Israel is the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. But Pastor Jim Franklin stood by the church's support of Israel. They support wars in places like Iraq and Afghanistan and seem to be unconcerned about the deaths of innocent children in places like Gaza. Israel has been under attack for years. Rockets being launched almost on a weekly basis into Israel. We believe Israel is one of our strongest allies. We stand with the people of Israel and their right to defend themselves and to exist as a sovereign nation. The group We Hold These Truths has held about 100 similar protests at churches nationwide. They say they targeted Cornerstone today because of its association with televangelist John Hagee, who has been criticized for his statements about Israel, the Roman Catholic Church, and Islam. Hagee spoke at the church in May. The only reason we got coverage is here because the pastor got set. We were there. He called the media. He's actually a local talk show host in Fresno. So the media there did a very fair coverage. I didn't even mention about Hagee attacking Catholics and Muslims. They did their own research. So the story in one minute and seven seconds was amazing, but we just don't get those kind of opportunities. It's very rare that we do. We've done a number of conferences. This is the International Islamic Conference for Peace and Awareness. It was in Baltimore four years ago. Chuck Carlson on the left spoke, and former Attorney General Ramsey Clark spoke, who's an anti-war activist, a, a great humanitarian of a man. But this was not a very large conference, but the ADL was there. And so the ADL wrote a report about the far-right and Muslim extremists gather in Baltimore. So they track these kinds of things. And another example, of how the Zionists control their opposition. Challenging Christian Zionism is a no-no. And the Christ of the Checkpoint Conference held this past March in Bethlehem. And I sent him our video and then asked him, would you allow us to come to this conference and present our video? And they said, yes, we'll put it on the program. We can't give you a separate session but we have a movie night, we will advertise it. Well, the movie, of course, is Christian Zionism, The Tragedy and Turning. And within two weeks, there's a website in England it's called Hurry Up Harry, Harry's Place. It's a Zionist site. They conducted a smear campaign against Chuck Carlson of We Hold These Truths and Stephen Sizer, who is a... Anglican priest from the UK who has studied and written, spoken widely on Christian Zionism. So they were basically intimidated to disinvite us. We could go to the conference, they said, but we couldn't present our video. So instead, we chose to go to, to Washington to join the folks at Occupy APAC. We are finding more people in other groups, like the Jewish Voice for Peace, in our vigil earlier that we had in Colorado, Jewish Witnesses for Peace is an anti-Zionist group in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And you can tell by their signs, they've been protesting in front of Henry Herskovitz's old synagogue for over six years. Chuck Carlson visited him, and then we visited Occupy APAC that I just talked about just a little bit ago. And then at the Occupy APAC, one of the highlights for me was to meet Cindy Corey. And you'll all remember that her daughter, Rachel Corey, was killed by an Israeli bulldozer trying to prevent the destruction of Palestinian homes. This was in 2003. So it was very encouraging. There were over 200 activists there at Occupy APAC from anti-war, peace-type groups, faith-based groups 
like we hold these truths. So it was a really great gathering. And my closing remark is you can help stop the insanity. I'm going to give you two assignments. Albert Einstein said that insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's what's happening in the United States. Four years ago, we elected a Democrat because we wanted change. Now, the Republicans say they're going to give us some more change. But as we know, we're going to get the same thing. Also attributed to Albert Einstein, any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. So I want you guys, everybody here, to move in the opposite direction and take the lead from, from Lena and Students for Justice in Palestine. We hold these truths. And two things I want you to do. I've got videos that I'm going to give out, our gift from We Hold These Truths to You, our video. But I'm going to give it to you under two conditions. First condition is that everybody in your family watch the video. And then the second one is pass it on to someone else. If you know a Christian, first you can ask him the question, do you believe that the modern state of Israel is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy? So you got a way to tell. If they say, oh yes, 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 well then you probably don't want to give them the video. <laughs> and you can copy this video. We don't have the media, only on rare occasions. The only way we have is by word of mouth, basically. And let's all work together for peace and justice in Palestine. Thank you very much. Oh. So sad to see a family's grief, hear a widow's cries. The way to peace is peace. We are not safer for toppling statues, for dropping bombs. The way to peace is peace.